If you look at laptops of the modern day, they're often marvels of technology. They're uh, often powerful, sleek, or ultra portable, or anywhere in between. That wasn't always the case though, even though we're very spoiled for choice right now, that was a completely different story in the 90s. If you wanted portable, you had to make some serious sacrifices in some other areas. Usually, at the very least, in the amount of ports or connectivity you had. Thinking back to the era when the internet was slow and lots of data still relied on removable storage, that wasn't always a good thing. Some laptops went so far into the portable side of things, there had to be some serious compromises. The slim Toshiba barely has any ports on it, and it was limited at what it could do. Although, boy, it sure was portable. But, if you had to have it all, you needed a brick. A proper brick. From back when laptops were real laptops. True workhorses did you get some real work done on. It's the 90s, and you need a laptop that can do it all. You need the Toshiba 4010 CDT. Welcome back to Rick's Ran Retro, where it's just another laptop brick in the wall. First off, I just love the workhorse laptop design of this Toshiba. It's like they took a few bricks, crammed in all the parts you'd want, and said, Looks good, ship it! Completely and totally embodying the laptop design of the day, our 4010 CDT is about as classic as you can get for a 90s laptop. Featuring a sleek, matte gray and robust look, it can tell it means business. It is a hefty machine, and definitely not something you casually toss around though. Portability does have to make some sacrifices to allow all the features this machine comes with. Before we dig into the specs on this machine, I wanted to give a bit of a direct history on it. This particular computer traveled the world doing different IT-related tasks through many years, and has been to numerous locations and countries. To my knowledge, never skipping a beat along the way. And considering the many years of service that went through, you wouldn't be able to tell from the looks of it. It looks basically spotless and almost new. I'll thank the previous owner considering he clearly took extremely good care of it, allowing us to enjoy it today in such immaculate condition. Now then, for those specs. This is a Pentium 2 266MHz. It shipped with 32MB of RAM, although ours has been upgraded to 64. We have a 2MB video card on board and one of the highlights, a real Yamaha OPL SA3 sound card providing the audio. Something I've seen on other Toshibas of the era, again looking at that slim one we saw earlier. It is fully Cell Master Pro compatible, which makes it easy to use in-game. The hard drive is 4.1 billion bytes! Well, usually you just say 4 gig, but they sure loved touting the number of bytes in marketing material back then. We can also see that there were two versions of this laptop centered around that screen. See, laptop screen technology was still not exactly great at the time, but if you could afford it, you could spring for the CDT model, which features a quite nice 12.1 inch TFT screen. If you went with the base model, you would look at the DSTN screen instead, which, thanks to the underlying technology, often produced a very smeared and poor image. Not ideal. But in our case, a TFT screen is more than acceptable, and in some cases, really good. It makes this laptop a lot more usable today, in my opinion. Not bad. Now, much to my surprise, this battery still holds a charge. And not just any charge, but a good one. This battery is actually lithium-ion, which might explain why it's still working, as it might be better than many of the other batteries at the time that relied on a nickel-cadmium setup. But, as it stands, this actually allows our computer to run for a while without being plugged in. Bit of a luxury on a machine of this age. The one part of this laptop that hasn't fared quite as well is the hard drive. The original IBM Desk Star that shipped with the machine has seen better days. Sadly, it won't boot anymore, and if we take a listen, the reason for that becomes pretty obvious fairly quickly. Yikes, that is not a good sounding click. In fact, hard drives shouldn't click at all like this. Either way, while we had good luck with SD card adapters as hard drive replacement, this time I want to try something different. This is a parallel to MSATA adapter, which allows the use of a modern flash-based hard drive in an older laptop like this. Is this the absolute best solution in this case? I'm not entirely sure, but I wanted to give it a try anyway, as we all know, spinning disks hard drives slowly but surely are all failing. Just like our desks are. The adapter unfortunately won't allow a direct mount into the drive cage that the original hard drive used, but it did come with a small plastic housing that shields it slightly. Since it weighs virtually nothing, it is held in place by the parallel connector just fine. 
After installing the new hard drive, which was detected by the machine with no further steps required, I loaded up Windows and all the drivers needed. As far as performance goes, we are still limited by the interface speed, although we don't have to wait for the disk to mechanically move to locate data, so that's a big plus. I did cut out some of the boot time and editing here, so startup times haven't changed that much. It's just a nice one-to-one -one replacement for the original drive. Let's take a look at our uh, Toshiba Satellite 4010 CDT around the perimeter and see what kind of ports and everything we have available on this lovely brick design machine. But uh, on the front, it's pretty uh, pretty basic design, but we do have the indicator light showing, you know, if it's plugged in, if the battery is charging, and uh, indicator for uh, hard drive access or floppy drive access and all that good stuff. So pretty basic up front there, but spinning around to the side, we have one of the main party tricks with this particular machine, which is the fact that we have CD-ROM drive and a floppy drive both integrated and they work at the same time. So you don't have to make a compromise on what to bring and you don't need a dongle or anything like that. It's an all-in-one design, making it uh, great for on the go for the, uh, you know, businessman on the go. We also have our PCMCIA slots, uh, which are unfortunately missing the door that was supposed to come with it, which is, I would think is pretty common for this era of machines, little flimsy plastic pieces. That's broken off. Right now, we do have a network card in here for uh, network access. It would have come with a modem, but well, that's not really anything you can use anymore, so. We also have a uh, lock here to uh, prevent, if you put the Kensington lock in here, the laptop lock, you can prevent the uh, removal of the PCMCIA, PCMCIA cards. Uh, so that's a nice feature to have, although I'm not gonna use it. If we spin around to the back, we also have a uh, lot of different ports. We do have a uh, VGA out port, which is great. We have a parallel or printer port, a serial port, a tiny fan, that's pretty noisy. We have an infrared port, if you remember those. Uh, maybe take a look at that in a minute here. Maybe we'll try and do a file transfer using the infrared port, but. It's a neat thing from the era, but one of the things that really shows that this machine is kind of bridging the gap here is that it has a USB port. I would say that's not super common on machines in this era, but it also lends to that whole everything in one machine. So that is really neat and could come very much in handy. Of course, USB 1, but you know, it has a USB port, which is nice. We have a PS2 port, which can be used for mouse or keyboard. Or in the case of a splitter dongle, it does support that. You can use both at the same time, which we happen to have as well. We then, of course, have our power in uh, for the power brick. Nothing exciting there. We do need that. Spinning around to the last side here, the power button is still interesting because it's got a slide lock that uh, basically lets you uh, prevent un unwanted button presses to start or turn off the laptop, which I think is a really neat idea, especially if you have it in a laptop bag. You don't want it to turn on by mistake, right? Something butting up against it. So you can lock that there. We do have a small pinhole there for the reset. Uh, we also have um, all the volume and uh, audio in and out settings like speaker out and uh, headphone out, sorry, and microphone in, and a small little volume knob. And uh, that's pretty much all the things around the side. But taking a real quick look at the top of the laptop as well, we do have a small set of speakers that's nothing to, uh, nothing to write home about. Uh, I mean, they're, they're integrated laptop speakers from the 90s, so they don't sound great, uh, but you know, that's what you had and you had everything included. So again, it's a really nice laptop that has almost everything you would want on the go. Um, I'm not seeing anything you're lacking here basically. So. so let's take a real quick look at some of the stuff that I was able to find for this Toshiba. Uh, I did have a little trouble finding the actual restore CDs for it. However, I did manage to install a little bit of the bundled software, above all some of the extra features that are in the control panel to configure the laptop, which is a little bit interesting. So yeah, there's no actual software, but however, if we go into the control panel and take a look there, there's a couple of things we find that are new. One is to configure the Yamaha sound chip or the Opel 3 SAX config here file, which lets you uh, set some of the settings, set some of the settings. Uh, regarding the Yamaha sound card on here. And uh, there's a few things like, you know, deciding which like 3D enhanced Y-Mersion or I-Mersion, I don't know what you call that. And we have a very interesting one that's quality. Normal, good, very good, or excellent. I have said the excellent now, but I'm not entirely sure what the uh, difference is there. But a few things you can configure in software here since it is a integrated sound card. So 
not a ton you can change. I kind of wish there was more controls around it, but that's what it is. You have, you know, Yamaha Immersion, Y Immersion. I don't know, doesn't matter. The one that's uh, definitely interesting is this Toshiba hardware setup, which uh, basically mimics a lot of the BIOS settings, including uh, finding out the BIOS version, setting your password. Uh, you have some uh, configuration, for example, uh, deciding if the OS or the machine itself handles uh, PNP or plug and play settings. So basically just BIOS settings, more or less. Enabling, disabling uh, printer settings, or not printer, but the port. We have some pointing device, which one can be used. In this case, I have an external mouse plugged in, which automatically disables the uh, accursed nub, uh, where you can set it to uh, use both at the same time. Display settings, um, one thing that's useful is if the LCD should be stretched or not, which uh, as we've seen, no one really works with uh, DOS games. I can't get the stretching to work correctly in Windows games. Again, this is an 800 by 600 panel, so uh, it has to scale everything to fit it correctly, which scaling is not that great for this era of laptop, but uh, it does work. You can disable some of the cache, which would be useful for uh, slowing down some of the DOS games or for games that don't uh, run very well on a fast machine. So that is a nice option as well to have directly here in software. Even set in the boot priority. So you can tell this is definitely a kind of like a BIOS setup a utility that you can run directly on the machine, which is a nice option to have. Uh, including enabling and disabling the USB and also the PCMCI cards. So, yes, it's cool to have this, uh, although there isn't much you can do besides what's already in the BIOS. The only other uh, option or uh, software that's included here now is uh, this uh, soft power off setting, if you will, uh, which has to do, I'm sure, with the, um, the undocking that you normally would do on a business computer like this. All right, there's one thing more I do have to show with this machine, and that is the uh, screensaver that can bundle this up besides the Toshiba wallpaper, of course. And it's it's just bizarre. So there's a specific Toshiba screensaver that was included in the bundle software package here. And if we go to preview here, we'll see that we have a lovely sky with computers flying through it, including, I think that's the discus there, and like a crosshair. I, I don't... I don't know what the point of this particular screensaver is. I mean, yeah, so it's a Toshiba screensaver, but it's just weird. It's just weird. And uh, it gets a little weirder, too, because uh, we have random objects besides computers, such as a flying pig coming in from the top right corner there. And the 90s. The 90s. They were weird. Look what we can do with a screensaver. I don't think the crosser ever hits or shoots anything. It's just, it's just weird. Just really weird. There's a lot of other little uh, things flying through here. We might see a hot air balloon, an airplane, and oh, never mind, there's a pig again. It's coming back for another round. And uh, there's a pterodactyl with a uh, with sunglasses coming through sometimes, and just some really, really weird stuff. But hey, it's, it's part of the software. So if you had a Toshiba like this, then you got this lovely screensaver included with it. It's weird. Well, we know now it's a pretty nice and solid laptop for today. It does check a lot of boxes, but I think some of the coolest parts of it are the ones that make it pretty compatible with games, maybe with some exceptions. Let's check out a variety of games and see how it handles them. I mean, it's, it's Doom 2. I don't think I need to say much more about it, but with full Sound Blaster compatibility, it's a pretty great time. Something we'll notice here is that in most DOS games, the screen fills out fully and correctly. That's not the case for many Windows games, as we'll see shortly, but as for Doom 2, it's a great experience. On the go. I just felt that laptops like this work great with some uh, slower strategy games, and Transport Tycoon Deluxe here is no exception. This is one you reasonably could play on the little mouse nub, although plugging in an external pointing device is far more ideal. This game is equally addictive either way. Build your transport empire while riding in your favorite real mode of transport.
Always bet on Duke. Portable Duke. This is where we see how well the P2 handles late era DOS games like Duke Nukem 3D here. With enough horsepower to push virtually through all DOS games with ease, it's again a great time. The screen scaling offers a great experience as well, fully filling out our TFD panel, making it feel like a natural way to play some Duke 3D. Like I mentioned earlier, laptops like this are a great fit for some slower strategy games. That's especially true for Heroes of Might and Magic 2, where the turn-based gameplay is ideal for pick-up and put-down gameplay. The hours can quickly melt away as you manage your fantasy empire, strategically recruit creatures to fight for you, and vanquish your foes. Better not leave the charter at home for this one. Alright, we've given the machine some softball so far, so let's push it harder. Much harder. Half-Life in software rendering mode is a tough slog for our P2266, but it does manage alright. Although in a fairly low resolution at 512 by 384 it is far from ideal. And it struggles quite a bit even then, but I'd still say it's actually playable. Although the tiny window we get from the lack of scaling isn't making it a very fun to play on this laptop speed aside. Don't bother waking up, Mr. Freeman. Right on through, sir. Looks like you're in the barrel today. Okay, so I noticed that in the spec sheet it actually mentions the onboard video card is Direct 3D compatible. Hmm. I've been doing this thing a disservice by not testing it, right? Yeah, now you have to see it here too. Here's Half Life running in Direct 3D mode. So, yes, we can say this computer has 3D acceleration, but I wouldn't exactly call it that. Although technically correct is the best kind of correct. Alright, we're currently on Arrakis making sure the spice keeps flowing, but if you hook everything up like we have here, uh, you basically have a desktop computer for all intents and purposes. And I will apologize for the uh, USB keyboard that's a little modern because the dongle or splitter I have, that's a PS2 here, that's what you would have used back in the day. It did not work with this machine and I think it might just be this particular dongle, so don't read too much into that. But with everything hooked up like this now, we have a CRT, we got speakers, mouse, keyboard. It acts like a desktop computer and it's got enough juice and compatibility to play a lot of these DOS games and Windows games. And it can be a pretty good time, especially when you're playing like this, you don't even think about the fact you're, you're basically on a laptop, quote unquote. But in uh, that sense too, with the working battery and everything, it's such a portable and versatile machine. And again, without having to use that dock, you can plug everything in and you're all set. Makes it a really, really versatile and flexible machine, and considering the power it has. Can't play everything, of course. Was that a Wilhelm screen? Maybe. Can't play everything, of course, but what it can play is pretty amazing. So, I've really enjoyed uh, using this machine and messing with it, and I look forward to using it some more. Probably stream on it as well. But, uh, I think that's it for now. So, I appreciate you watching, and thanks, and until next time. If you enjoy this video on some retro laptop goodness, maybe you like some of my other ones. I cover a wide range of retro topics, often focusing on retro computers. You can find me on my website, on social media, and be sure to catch me live at 8.45pm Central. See you next time.